I never said thank you. An amazing series has concluded, an amazing story has concluded and what a journey it has been, what a magnificent journey it has been. But as Tony Stark said, part of journey is the end and so this journey of getting consistent quality from MCU for 6 weeks comes to an end too. And what a beautiful beautiful end this was. This could be the end of the whole MCU and I don't think anyone would complain. A perfect conclusion to the perfect show. I remember in my review of Secret in Vain, I said I hope Loki season 2 won't disappoint. And not only did it not disappoint, but it exceeded all the expectations I had. No question about it, I am ready to get hurt again. I guess I should talk about it in details, so fair warning, there will be light spoilers for the episode, nothing major, just explaining the basic premise of the episode. As we saw in the end of the last episode, Loki finally learns how to control time slipping. He can now control at which point of his life at TVA he wants to go back to and he returns back to the time when Victor was removed from the existence and Temporal Loom sent everyone back to their lives before TVA. But now that he's back, he is having trouble trying to get the desired results and soon he realizes if you mess with time, time tends to mess back. Let me tell you, this episode won't leave me for a long long time. It hits right in the feels. It is a bittersweet feeling that I would like to keep for a while. The episode was the best episode of any MCU show, no doubts about it. It was outstanding, they took such a fascinating yet heartbreaking approach with it that you start to wonder if they planned it all since the very beginning. They handled the story with such a great care while fleshing out Loki's character and making him look like a total badass. It was basically a character study of Loki showing his pain and after this episode, I don't think I have any doubt in my mind that Loki's character arc is the best of the MCU. He is easily one of the best written characters of this universe, if not the best. I said it in the last episode's review too and I will say it again, Marvel hit the biggest jackpot when they casted Tom Hiddleston for this role. He elevated every scene he is in, the pain in his eyes or the joy can't be missed. And it is such a huge stake show that it wouldn't have worked if it was not for his incredible performance. He over exceeded in this character and credits to MCU for recognizing how much more he can offer to the character. And he is not the only one who over exceeded in his character. Every actor in this show did. Owen Wilson was just wonderful. He played Mobius perfectly and ever since Mobius appeared in the first episode of season 1, he has been one of my favorite. Owen Wilson has this great quality to build a natural chemistry with his co-stars and I think it's a great quality that an actor can possess. It's mark of a good actor. If you have watched review of any previous episode, you will know that I have this tradition of always appreciating the chemistry between Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson since it's so natural and fun to watch. And as this is the last episode and I won't get to mention it maybe ever again, so I will share an opinion that may be unpopular. Ok so according to me, the chemistry between Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston is tad bit better than the chemistry between Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston. I know, I know it's controversial but that's how I feel and I am not taking anything away from Thor and Loki's duo. I am just saying I like Mobius and Loki together a bit more. Their bickering with each other as well as their serious talks, it engages me a lot and I am always left fishing for more always shooting for them. One thing I will say though, if we are talking about the whole of season 2, I wish they gave Mobius a bit more to do. He was emotional support of Loki as always, and his past was explored as well, but as far as contributing to the bigger picture goes, he didn't do much. But hey, at least we got to see more Mobius this time, and getting more Mobius is always a win. Also we got to see him on jet ski, which is easily one of the best moments of the whole MCU. <laughs> K.V. Kwan was a fantastic addition to the show and he made it so much more fun and interesting. Easily one of the best characters introduced in MCU after Endgame, just like Mobius. About Sophia Di Mantino, she was brilliant but I felt that they sidelined Sylvie this season. In season 1, Loki and Sylvie were inseparable and their adventures together were really fun. And it made for a strong duo cause they are both Loki and they understand each other better than anyone. But I think that connection was missing in this season cause they were mostly conflicting with each other. 
I would have loved to see that a little this season and yeah, there were some moments between them but there was definitely a distance as well. Overall, she did her job brilliantly and I really enjoyed it. Also, I still like Sylvie's character, I just think they could have done more with her. Wenmi Musako and Eugene Cordero were great sports and sold their scenes wonderfully. Again, I won't say anything about Jonathan Major's actions in real life but I will say his acting is outstanding throughout all the MC projects he's been part of and it shines especially in this episode. The way the theme was used throughout the episode made me emotional. It only elevated the whole finale to another level. Props to Natalie Hall for coming up with an amazing theme which is among the top ones of MCU. The background score used during the last 10 minutes was so soothing and it managed to calm me down even after what I just witnessed. The pacing of this episode was just perfect. It was 53 minutes long and they didn't waste any time while giving us so many memorable, emotional and even fun moments. They achieved so much in these 53 minutes and told a gorgeous but painful story like it's no big deal. I am just surprised by it right now and it will take some time to take it all in. The production quality of this show was astonishing. That's why I say it felt like a complete show, nothing incomplete about it. The CGI, the sets, the color grading, everything was top notch. Tell me how did this show has a better production quality with a budget of 141 million dollars than she Hulk, which had a budget of 225 million dollars. I would like to think this show was more CJ heavy than that one. With this episode being the end of the series, they have left some loose ends for the future projects to explore and there are still some unanswered questions that will be answered sooner or later. I am really really excited for what will happen to these characters that may or may not have survived. And before ending the video, I will compare it to the first season and talk about few criticisms I have. While I think this episode was the best of the both seasons, but if I am comparing the whole seasons, I will say season 1 was slightly better. It was more character driven in the way that it explored characters in each episode, but in this season, I felt they didn't explore the characters until the last two episodes. Also, every episode of season 1 had a perfect pacing, and while I think most episodes of this season had perfect pacing too, especially last 3, but episode 2 and 3 did suffer from occasional pacing issues. It could have been better and some scenes could have been shorter or executed better. Also at points, it felt like that stuff was happening between the episodes that we were not being shown. This was extra apparent for the episode 2. It's just that in season 1 we were not aware of Kang or the Multiverse of War, so it didn't have as high of stakes as this one. So they had time to have some laid back moments between the characters to explore them. But this season had so much to set from the very beginning that they didn't had any time for slow moments. So considering that, they still did a fantastic job of exploring while keeping the characters in mind. And they did have few laid back moments but they were few and far between. Overall, I love both seasons and I will say both are the best MCU projects since Endgame. Among the top 10 or maybe even top 5 or 40 or however many projects MCU has made, at least one of them is top 5. But that's all I will say. Thank you for listening to my rambling. If you have watched, do share your thoughts. Or if you are still shocked after the finale, maybe we can talk it through. <laughs> that's it for the video. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.